Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, chapter 6-1, tax tables, worksheets, and schedules, or as they say in Canada, schedules. Okay, objectives. We're going to express tax schedules algebraically. We're going to compute federal tax federal income taxes using tax tables and tax schedules. All right, uh, quickly, let's go over the um, vocabulary. Property tax is just simply that. It's tax on your dwelling, your house. And if you own a property that your house is on, it would be the combination of the land plus the building value on that land and you get taxed. Sales tax is just simply the tax you get charged when you purchase items. So if I go into a store and buy a pair of sneakers for $50 and it's 7% sales tax, I'd pay $3.50 in tax and my total cost of my sneakers would be $78.50, for example. Taxable income is the amount of money you make that can be taxed. There is income that is non-taxable and we'll get into that today. Um, income tax is the tax on what you make. IRS stands for the Internal Revenue Service. That is the um, branch of the government that deals with taxes and taxing people and tax laws and auditing if you don't do your taxes correctly and all that. Uh, married filing jointly just means if a husband and wife are married, they combine their incomes and do their taxes as one tax return filing jointly. Uh, qualifying widow or widower would be if a person's spouse passes away, then they would take uh, file using a qualifying widow or widower form. It's different tax rate if one of the um, one of the two have passed away. Uh, married filing separately, that would be if a husband and wife both work. And the husband files his own tax return based on his W-2 from his job, and his wife files her own tax return based on her W-2 from her job, so they're married and they're filing separately. Uh, head of household would be where you would have possibly, say, a single parent with kids in the house. Um, the head of household would just be the one person filing taxes, and then they're children or someone else in the house would be considered a dependent and can be declared on their taxes, then they would be considered the head of household in the tax return. And constraints and inequality constraints we'll get into when we do the examples, okay? Uh, a constraint basically is just a range, if you will, of values between a maximum and a minimum. That is your, your constraints. So Ron is single, example one. Ron is single. So I'm gonna highlight this information. So Ron's single. He completes an IRS tax form. He calculates his taxable income is $51,482. The instructions tell him to use a tax table to determine his taxes. How much does Ron owe in taxes? So you are going to use this tax table right here. And line 43, which is the taxable income, this number here would be on line 43 in his tax return. And it says at least, so at least means a certain value or more. So if I said at least five, the answer to that would be five or more, five, six, seven, okay? Just less than does not include, if I said less than six, you can't say six. Less than six is not six, less than would be five, four, three. So that's not including the end value, in other words. Um, and then there's single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, and head of household. Different columns, different tax rates. So here we go. Ron is single. We're going to use this column right here. His income is 51,482. 51,482 is between 51,450 and 51,500. So I'm going to use this row this column because he's single. And the answer to my example one is right here. So how much does Ron owe in taxes? Since, and I'll write this, I'd say since, okay, since his income, $51,482 is less than $51,500 but greater than or equal to 51,450, 
comma, his taxes are this amount here, $8,663, okay? All right, um, check your understanding now. It says if R represents Ron's taxable income, express his tax interval as an inequality using interval notation. So if we didn't know his exact amount of 51,482, then what we would do is do a greater than, less than. And if I don't know his exact amount, if it was 51,100 or 51,800, it's in the 50 somewhere, but I don't know for sure. What I would do is just call his income I, okay? And it is going to be greater than or equal to the at least column. I'm gonna do this as general as possible here. So I is greater than or equal to the at least column, but less than the, but less than column. Okay, that is very general what this is saying. Um, if you wanted to do it this way and put the amount in that we used up here, it would be $51,400 income, 51,500. And it's not 400, it's 450. Okay. So this is what it would look like if it were this value, his income is greater than or equal to 51,450, but less than $51,500. Okay, example two. <clears throat> Maria and Don are married taxpayers filing joint returns. Married, filing jointly. Their combined taxable income is 153,900. The IRS offers a tax schedule so that taxpayers can calculate their taxes. Use the tax schedule below for married taxpayers filing jointly to calculate Maria and Don's taxes. So I look at 153,900 and it is more than 151,200 and less than 230. So we are talking about this row right here, okay? So it says we're going to, if we're in this, um, keep forgetting that word, constraint, if we're within the constraints of 151,200 and 23,450, then we take 29,387.50 plus 28% of their amount over this. So the first thing I wanna do is take the $153,900 and they're in this row right here. And we're going to use this tax uh, formula for values greater than 1512. So I'm gonna subtract 151,200. The first thing you'd wanna do is find out how much money they made over that amount. And that is our taxable income, okay? And that's the other definition, taxable income. So what are we going to do? We're gonna take $29,387.50, okay? Because they made between this and this, we're using this value plus, $2,700, which is the amount above 50, 151,200, okay? So 2,700 is going to be our taxable amount that we're going to multiply by 0.28, which is 28%, okay? So if I get my calculator, I, I like to show all my work. So I'm just gonna rewrite 29,387.50 plus, and I'm going to take 2,700 times 0.28. And that is $756. And now I'm going to add that to my $29,387.50. And my taxable amount is $30,143.50. Okay, so they pay $30,143.50 if they make 153.9. Okay, so now let's take a look at check your understanding. Let me erase everything I put in here and we'll do the check your understanding. 
Using the table above, what taxable income would yield a tax of exactly 10,312.50? So what I wanna do is go to the tax is column and look for that 10,312.50. And the only time we aren't adding 25% of something to it is when we are exactly $74,900. Because if I make $74,900, that is going to be, um, actually that says over. So it wouldn't be this one, okay. So this one is, hmm, I don't like how this is worded. This is what first time I've come across this. So I see the 10,312.50 of the amount over 74,900. Well, 74,900 isn't over. So it must come from this up here. So if I did 74,900, it should be $1,845 plus 15% of that. Let me check that, see if that's how it's going to come out. So I'm going to take $1,845, which is right there. And I'm going to add that. And I'm going to take 74,900 minus 18,450. Okay, that would give us the taxable income and multiply that by 0.25. And I got 15,000. So mm, let's see. Did I subtract 18,450 from that? I did. So if I made $74,900 and I subtract $18,450 from that and multiply it by 15% and add that to $1,845, this is 15,000. It doesn't sound right. Let me check that again. $1,845, that is this amount right here, plus 0.15 of the amount over 18,450. So if I make $74,900 and I subtract $18,450 from that and multiply it by that 15% and add it to $1,845, why is that now negative? Um, let me see, second, enter. Oh, I see what I did, too many zeros. Try that again. And it is 10,312.50, okay? So what they're basically saying is that was a little confusing because this over here made me pause instead of, I can't use this value right here because $7,490 isn't over $7,490. So if they made $7,490, then I wouldn't use this row, I would use this row. But I took the $7,490 I'm sorry, $74,900. Okay. And I use this amount here. I'm sorry, this amount right here, plus 15% of the difference of 74,900 minus 18,450. And it gave me this amount here. So the answer is $74,900. Okay, page three brings us to example three. The IRS includes the tax schedule for information purposes only for taxable income over $100,000. Taxpayers must use the tax worksheet. Here in a portion of the worksheet for married taxpayers filed, here is a portion of the worksheet for married taxpayers filing jointly. Calculate Maria and Don's tax using this section B worksheet. So I need to go back to part A they made $153,900. So I'm going to put that up here. $153,900. That is how much they made jointly. Okay. Their income's over $100,000. And this is over $100,000. So we're going to use our Schedule B. Okay. So they're filing married jointly. Okay. Or qualifying widow or widower would use this form as well. Complete the row below that applies to you. 
So 153 is over 151, but less than 230. So I'm going to use this row here, okay? I'm going to use this row right here. So enter the amount from line 43. Line 43 would have been your taxable income. So that would be $153,900 goes here. And then it says, B says multiply multiplication amount. So it's telling you to take, and then over here it says C, column C, you obtain by multiplying A by B. So take A, 153.9. So $153,900 times B times 28% or 0.28. Enter, and I get $43,092. Okay, so 43,092, all right? And then here over here, we have a subtraction amount and it says tax, subtract D from C and enter the result here on your form 1040, your tax form 1040, line number 44. So you use this table to calculate and then you put your answer in the tax table, line 44. So it's pretty uh, clear how they explain the rules and the steps in filling out a tax form. So now that I know it's 43092, I'm now going to subtract D from that. So I'm just gonna take my answer minus $12,948.50. And when I do that, I get 30,143.50. Okay. So someone who makes $153,900 would pay $30,000 in taxes. That would knock their pay down to $123,000. All right. David and John have a taxable income of $118,675. Davida, using the married filing jointly worksheet above, determine the amounts for columns A and C. What is their calculated tax? So all they're asking you to do is to do what we just did up here. 118,675 goes in the first column or row. So it's more than 100, but less than 151. So they are right here, 118,000. $675 goes there. I'm going to take that 1,000, $118,675, and I'm going to multiply it by 0.25 or divide it by four. And that will give me 29,668.75. And then I subtract D. So minus 8412.50, enter, and they're going to pay 21,256.25. Okay, so the answers to the check your understanding are these three values here. The calculated tax is $21,256.25. Okay, uh, extend your understanding. Chase has a taxable income of X dollars. The amount X is over 230,450, but not over 411. Okay, so we're gonna use the table again. We don't know exactly how much he makes, but we know it's more than 230, less than 411. So let me switch to red for this. So my extend your understanding is right here. More than 230, less than 411.5, express his tax algebraically. So just use the table. If we don't know how much he makes, it's X. Multiply X times 33%. So my value here would be 0.33 X. And then finally, we're going to take this minus this. So this answer is going to be 0.33 X minus $24,471. Okay, so my answer to this is 0.33x minus 24,471. Okay, and that is their taxes algebraically. Okay, and that I believe brings us to the end of lesson 6.1. Now go do your assignment.